So today we're going to be talking about putting a uh, finish, like a natural foot finish, a stain and clear coat mixture on your project. Uh, first we're going to be back in the finish room, in the back of the classroom next to the garage door. When you go to this room, the very first thing you want to do is first turn on the light switch, the one on the right, I'm sorry, the left hand side, flick it up, turns the lights on on the inside. And the second thing you want to do is the ventilation system, this has to be on. So take the turn dial, turn it the whole way into the circle, to the right. That way the ventilation system is on and um, we have proper air movement. Last thing you want to do is eventually, you want to make sure that we have a box fan down here. This has to be turned on as well. That way we have proper air circulation since there's fumes that are emitted off of the stain itself. So when you're staining your piece of wood, basically it's stain is a way of enhancing the natural look of the wood and the wood grain itself. We like to classify the wood grain as these lines and kind of the coloration of the wood itself. You got to make sure though before you come back here and start messing around with stain that you have your surf surface preparation completely done and finished. That means sanding of all types have to be finished from medium to fine. And make sure before you bring it back here you get my approval. Don't just show up back here and expect to get a nice wood finish if um, you did a very bad job sanding. So make sure you get my approval first. But when you do the surface preparation, basically what we're looking for is two things. One, um, your project should be completely smooth to the touch. And two, there shouldn't be any pencil lines or anything that are left over. If the pencil lines are still there, um, unfortunately when you go to stain your project, it's not going to go anywhere. It's actually going to get worse and show up like a, a highlighter or stick out like a sore thumb. Before you start staining your project, you have to choose one of the four colors that I offer for stain. The stain I use is a stain and clear coat on my mixture, which just speeds the process up for ourselves. So, there's four different types, like I said. Um, you can use Bombay Mahogany, which is on the top left. Classic Oak, which is pretty light. Pecan has kind of like a, a small little red tint to it. And Antique Walnut is um, like a lighter brown color. So you can choose one of the four. Once you determine what type of stain you would like to use out of the four different types, you're going to need to go over to the supply center, which is as soon as you access the finish room. It's on the right hand side of the door. Everything is labeled and has a specific location. Make sure it goes back where it belongs when you're done. It's all completely organized and cleaned up. But before you even touch any stain, you're going to need a few different supplies. On the right hand side here, over here, you'll see right behind that white little organizer, there's a bunch of aprons. I highly suggest you use apron because if you get the stain on your clothes, it doesn't come off. They're ruined forever. Stains are on the middle shelf at the very top. You're going to need to grab a pair of gloves. I have medium and large. Um, if neither of those are large enough for you, I have extra large as well in the back. Um, four different colors. We have antique walnut, Bombay mahogany, and classic oak in the center. And over on the right hand side, we're also going to need some stain rags, which are on the very bottom. You're going to need one, or actually two stain rags to complete this process. A couple last things you're going to need. On the very top, you're going to need a screwdriver and a hammer. And then over on the right hand side, grab yourselves a few paper towels just to help with cleanup. Underneath the table, you'll see a bunch of boards with nails inside of a box. You'll need at least one, maybe even two of these if your project does not fit on there. That helps suspend your project above the workplace or the table. That way nothing gets stuck on as far as like a dirt and other debris is concerned on your fence. So just very quickly, here's all the supplies that we're gonna need. We have our stain of choice on the top left. We have over here on the right hand side, we have our screwdriver and our hammer or the mallet. We have a mixing stick right here to help mix up the stain. Um, notice that our piece of wood is on top of the board with nails, that way it's not touching the table surface. Two rags, and of course our gloves. Once you have all your supplies, and one thing I want to backtrack on is make sure you have a nice big paper towel for cleanup, and it's always handy to just have that by your side. In case of spill or accident, or you get some on your skin or wherever. So let's set that off to the side. So after you have all your supplies, the very first thing you want to do is you want to take your screwdriver, the straight blade part, which is right here, and you would take the blade and stick it right down inside of this little groove on the outside. And we're going to twist it just like this. Rotate until we have our lid popped off and we can take it safely off just like that. Always keep your stain at the center of the table. Doesn't matter where you're working, that way it doesn't accidentally get bumped and knocked over. This stuff is very expensive. It's around like $12 to $15 a quart, depending on which color that you get. Next step, usually what happens over a period of time is stain and just clear coat in general likes to separate just because all this stuff um, sits in one location at a time. We're gonna take a mixing stick, stick it inside, 
and just stir it until we get all those like little parts mixed together. And you can kind of notice that's a little bit globby at the bottom. We want to mix all that globby stuff in with the clear coat and the stain together. So just mix it until all of your stuff is nice and even and you don't have any globby stuff coming off the end. Once everything's all mixed up, the easiest and cleanest way to clean this up is just let it drizzle out for a little bit. Wipe it along the edge to get the worst of it. And then instead of just laying it flat on the table and creating a giant mess, here's where you might want to take a small piece of your paper towel, rip it off. And we're going to use a small little bit of paper towel to help kind of clean it up. So we're going to go just like this and just wipe her down. Now we're going to put this back where it belongs inside of the uh, little paint stirring stick mixing green container. Now that our stuff is all mixed together, the next step is going to be taking the clear coat and stain mixture itself and putting it on our board. So notice my board is on top of the board with nails suspended. It's not on the table directly. And um, we're going to be coating the, all the sides of this thing. So picking up and our gloves are going to help protect us from getting stain on our hands. So we're going to take one of our little um, square rags, make it into a small little bunch and fold it up. Dip the tip of it into the stain just like that. We're not going to coat the whole thing. Any extra, just wipe it off the edge. But you should have a decent amount. We're going to take the board, wipe the stain all over it. And we're not necessarily trying to get rid of all like the... Like the parts where there's too much stain. It doesn't matter at this point because we're gonna let it set and soak a little bit. Coat the entire thing with your stain. Try not to be too messy with it. And you can kind of see how the wood grain is still there, but it's literally dying and make it, or making the wood into a different color, which is pretty cool. And as you need more, you can dip into it. Make sure you get all of your edges and your ends. You don't wanna leave, you do not wanna leave any of the wood unfinished or unstained. Coat the entire thing. So once your board is completely coated, you can kind of see there's like smear marks all over it. That's normal. We're going to let it sit for about maybe a minute or so. so the wood can literally act like a sponge in the pores and the fibers of the wood can soak up the actual stain itself and the clear coat. After it sits for a while, then we're going to take our clean rag, the second one that we had, remember we should have two, we're going to wipe away all that extra stain that was left over. And that way it's going to give it a nice uniform look the whole way across. You never want to let extra stain left over at all. Take all the extra off, rotate. And our board is stained just like that. So, whenever you're letting it dry, never put it on a table surface where it's completely flat. It has to be suspended by those nails. So if we take a look at it from a side view, you can kind of see that there's plenty of room for everything to circulate. Air can go all around it, all over the locations, and dry it out completely. Next up, before we go on any further, is we're going to do some cleanup work. So for cleanup, it's very easy, but if you don't do something the right way, you're going to have a giant mess and probably ruin your clothes or someone else's. What I mean by that is when we put our lid on, sometimes what happens is inside this little groove right here that goes around, stain and clear coat gets caught in there. And this is basically what happens. People put the lid right on top, they'll take the mallet and start to whack the top of the container itself. And what happens is the force of that pressure will spray and splatter any clear coat that's inside that groove out. So to prevent that from happening, here's what you do. You're going to take the lid, put it on top. To prevent that spray from going all over the place, take a paper towel, put that on top. Now what we're going to do is take the mallet and tap around the outside edge, never directly in the center. Go around a few times just to seal it off. Make sure it's completely sealed and everything should be cleaned up from there for your lid and while that's concerned. Any supplies that we're using, go back on the supply shelf and everything has a specific location. Stay in the center, you should put it according to where the name goes. Hammer and the screwdriver go on the very top.
Any stain rags, gloves, and anything else that's left over, we don't keep or recycle. Stain rags are already used. We already have stain on them, we wanna get rid of those. Same with our gloves. We're gonna chuck them inside of the red bucket. Now for our project, this thing is still wet with stain and clear coat. We can touch it as long as we're like touching the board with nails, but you never wanna to directly touch this stuff with your skin. It doesn't come out easily at all, it leaves it sticky. So to speed up the process, we're gonna be using a hair dryer. It's the end of the period and you don't necessarily have time to use a hair dryer. I'll show you where to put that at next. Use a hair dryer, turn on its high setting, and we're just gonna go all around our project and try to dry it up or get the um, clear, clear coat to a point where it's dry. When you're done with the hair dryer, make sure you turn it off and stick it in its proper location. And um, the test to see if it's completely dry, just rub one finger over top. You shouldn't feel any damp or sticky or moist spots. If you don't have enough time to get your project dried out with the hair dryer, what you're gonna do instead is just put it on the floor with nails, well, it should be there to begin with, and stick it on top of one of these shelves. One thing I always like to do is take a piece of masking tape, put my name on it, and that's over at the supply location in the finish room stick it to the front of whatever my project's sitting on, that way I know it belongs to me. So I took my name, put it on a piece of masking tape, I'm gonna carefully just stick it to the front. That way we know it belongs to me and not someone else that accidentally takes it from another class or just our class in general. After your project finishes completely dry from the hair dryer, the next step is you're gonna be going over to the white little organizer next to where we keep all the supplies in the finish room. And you're gonna be grabbing a piece of extra fine sandpaper. Now this sandpaper is a lot finer than the stuff we used out in the classroom space in the workshop area. So um, please don't get those two confused. So what we're about to do is we're gonna take our sandpaper and lightly sand all the top surfaces, all the surfaces that are visible. What happens is when you start to stain or clear coat a project, any dust is trapped in the air or maybe unfortunately inside of the paint or stain itself, stain, um, does get stuck on the top finish and will make it kind of rough. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I just sanded forever and now I put a clear coat stain on it and now it seems like nothing ever happened. So what we're gonna do is take sandpaper and just break it down very ever so slightly. Take sandpaper and literally you don't want to sand too hard, lightly, just to get rid of all like the bumpy areas. I like to fold my sandpaper up just like this and then sand back and forth very, very lightly. I'm barely pressing hard at all. Once you're done with one side, flip it over, do the other side, and do all your surfaces. You'll be able to feel the difference literally with your piece of wood. When you're done lightly scuffing the surface and sanding, and notice we didn't sand too hard to the point where it was taking the finish off. All we did was just lightly sand and barely press over the top. We're gonna take the sandpaper and put it back in its original location where it belongs. Once your project is completely dry, the very last step is putting a coat of wax on it to protect it. The wax is located in the purple container on the very bottom of our little supply um, area over here in the finish room. What we need from this container, we're gonna need a tub of wax, and we're also gonna need one of these buffing rags here, just one. Once we have the wax, what we wanna do is open up the container. Remember, you need um, a can of wax as well as a buffing rag. Application pads to like smear the wax on will be inside. Take your fingers, we're gonna go around the outside edge just like we did with a screwdriver except with our fingers this time. We're gonna pry that lid open to try to get this opened up just like so. And like I said, your application rags are gonna be inside. One thing to make note of is you do not need to have gloves for this process and I would not suggest them. I don't want you to wear gloves, it's just as a waste. If you get some of this wax on your fingers, it's just a little bit of a greasy feeling. It doesn't necessarily hurt you at all. One thing I want you to make note of is make sure your project piece is 100% dry. There's no sticky or wet or tacky spots on it whatsoever or else you're going to have a giant mess on your hands and waste my wax. So we're going to take one of the application rags. These should be clean by the way. They might have some wax on them, which is okay, but they shouldn't have any stain on them. We're going to take them. Open up the container, just like so. Make it into like a nice like little wad. And we're gonna smear some wax on. Get a nice even pasty amount like that. 
after we have some wax on our piece, or actually our application rag, we're gonna take our piece of wood and smear the wax all over it, kind of like we did when we stained. You're not necessarily, I'd say, being particular with where the wax goes, just smear it all over. Make sure you do all sides at once. All the ends, the back, the front, and this is gonna serve as our clear protective layer. After you apply your wax, wait about one to two minutes for the wax to fully cure and kind of form a hard shell around everything. If you don't wait long enough, you'll just smear the wax off altogether, which is not what you want. After it dries, you're gonna take your buffing rag and we're just literally gonna be smearing or wiping off any extra wax that was left over. Just lightly go back and forth, wipe off any extra wax. And after we do that, we are completely finished with our project and the staining and finishing process. A couple final notes. Make sure that you put your application rags for the wax back inside the wax container. Close the lid. And finally, take everything, the buffing rag and your wax container, and put it back where it belongs in the purple container. Any boards with nails that you used, whether that they're on the table that you just worked with, or they're over on the side shelving unit, make sure you take them and put them under the table inside the box. The very last thing you'll do with your project, and most likely you're gonna be doing this with the phone stand project, is submission. And to submit your project, this is all you have to do. You're gonna need a rubber band, which you're gonna need the little ones that are kept underneath my podium, which should be about right there. And after you get one of those, you're going to have to take some masking tape and a sharpie and make like a little name flag and put on it your period and your name first and last. Final step, we're going to take our rubber band and we're going to attach our name flag to it. You never want to take masking tape at this point when your project is completely finished. It doesn't matter if you did acrylic craft paint or stain in clear coat and wax. You never want to completely just attach this directly to the finish because it will rip the finish right off. So let's flip it over. And we're going to very carefully put the rubber band through, just like so. Right at the halfway point and make a giant sandwich out of it. So right there is our flag, like so. That way when I grade it, I know who this belongs to. And this is gonna help hold both of your pieces together. Right now I only have one piece, but let's say we have two. That'll help hold both of our pieces together and identify everything. As far as where to submit it, I will tell you probably sometime in class where the submission box is.